Welcome to the Web Machine Learning Path. I'm Jason Mays, Developer Relations Engineer for TensorFlow.js here at Google, and I'll be helping you get started using machine learning for real-world applications on the web. Over the last decade, web apps have become more social and interactive, with support for multimedia, comments, and more all happening in real time by potentially tens of thousands of people, even on a smaller website. Now, this, however, has presented an opportunity for spammers to abuse such systems, to associate less savory content with the articles, videos, and posts others have written in an attempt to gain more visibility. Now, traditional methods of spam detection, such as a list of blocked words, can easily be bypassed, which are simply no match for these advanced spam bots, which continually evolve in their complexity. Fast forward to today, and you can now use machine learning models that have been trained to detect such spam. Traditionally, running a machine learning model to pre-filter comments may have been performed on the server side, but with TensorFlow.js, you can now execute machine learning models client side in browser via JavaScript before such comments even touch the backend, potentially saving costly server-side resources too. This web path focuses on using natural language processing, which is the art of understanding human language with a computer, to show you how to build a web app from a blank canvas that tackles the very real problem of comment spam, which many web developers will encounter. But first, let's ensure we're all at the same page and recap what machine learning is, how TensorFlow.js fits into the picture, and why you might want to consider using machine learning in JavaScript. Now to start, you may have heard of a number of terms related to this field of study. Things like artificial intelligence, machine learning, or even deep learning. So let's take a moment to formally define those. Artificial intelligence, or AI for short, is essentially the science of making things smart. More formally, it can be defined as human intelligence exhibited by machines. But this is a very broad term, and right now we're actually creating systems for other form of narrow AI. And what does that mean? Well, narrow AI is simply a system that can do one or maybe a few things as well or better than a human expert for that task. A great example would be text classification. And as a web developer, you may have at some point been asked to make a contact form where the user writes a message, that message is sent to the company, and someone then decides what sub-team it should be forwarded to. Well, with advances in technology, we can now train a system to automatically route the message to the correct team based on its content if there are enough examples to learn from. Pretty useful, right? So what about machine learning, or ML for short? Well, machine learning is an approach to achieve artificial intelligence that we just spoke about on the previous slide. And essentially, this is the actual program that runs and can learn from prior experience to find patterns in a given set of data. And what makes these machine learning programs so powerful is that they can be reused and trained with new data without changing the code itself. So if I create a machine learning system that recognizes cats, I can use the same code without modification to then recognize dogs, just by feeding it different training images for it to learn from. And this is very powerful and a big difference to how we used to program in the past. In fact, taking spam emails as an example, in the past, we may have used conditional rules to check if a word was associated with spam. If it was, we would block the email. However, spammers can get savvy to this, modify the word just slightly, and then the system is broken. Fast forward to today, and we can now use machine learning to solve this problem. Instead, thousands of users mark emails as spam, and the machine learning will automatically figure out what words and features are most likely to have contributed to spam emails. We can then retrain the model every day with fresh content, and now no human needs to be involved to maintain manual lists, freeing up their time to do more important things. And there are many common use cases out there for machine learning that go beyond text as well. Things like object detection to know what exists in an image, or numerical regressions to predict some output number based on some input number. For example, if a house is 1,000 square feet, what would its price be? With enough examples, we can actually predict that. Now, natural language processing allows us to understand sentences and words. With this, we can mark if a sentence on a blog post comment is toxic, or if it's positive, negative, or neutral. And when we have audio for things like speech recognition, which is basically how your smart assistant or phone can understand your voice commands. And you can even be creative with generative models. 
an example of which is shown on the right hand side of this slide. The faces on the right do not exist. In fact, a machine learning program has learned what the essence of a human face may be and then is asked to generate new ones. Just like if I ask you to think of a purple cat, you haven't seen one, but you can imagine what that might look like and then draw one. The same thing is going on here, except the computer is really good at drawing. And then we have deep learning, which is essentially a technique for implementing machine learning that we just spoke about on the previous slide. And this is one of the many algorithms you can choose to make the machine learning program actually work. Here, we show a concept known as deep neural networks, which are essentially code structures that are arranged in layers, as shown, and are loosely based on how we believe the human brain to work essentially learning patterns of patterns. And what do I mean by that exactly? Well, imagine in the early stages, you can recognize something simple, like a bunch of lines. Go one level deeper, and those lines might combine to allow you to recognize shapes. Go one level deeper still, and those shapes might combine to allow you to recognize objects. For example, a face might be represented by several shape features in a certain position relative to each other. And the deeper into the layers you go, the more complex patterns it will be able to recognize, but it will also require more processing power in order to do so. So in summary here, you can see how these three concepts come together. The deep learning algorithm is used in the machine learning program that can create this grander goal of artificial intelligence. And these concepts actually go back to the 1950s, but it's only now that we have enough computing resources to make them useful to us, which is one reason for the recent growth. And we're living in a truly exciting time. We have the start of a new wave for how we create smarter systems in the future. Machine learning could influence every industry out there. And as a web developer, you are fortunate to have exposure to customers from all of those industries. By upskilling your knowledge, you can give your web applications superpowers, enabling you to offer powerful new capabilities to your customers, or even make them more efficient at a given task. Now, TensorFlow.js is a machine learning library written for JavaScript. Doing machine learning in the browser has several advantages, such as lower latency, as there's no server involved, user privacy, as the data stays on device, and it's got super easy deployment. Anyone with a web browser can use it. And that means you can use machine learning anywhere JavaScript can run. That includes in the web browser, server side, mobile native, desktop native, and even IoT devices, such as the Raspberry Pi. And JavaScript is one of the only languages that can run across all of these devices without extra plugins, giving you the ability to deploy and run anywhere with one code base. And this is a great win for JS devs, as you can make scaled web systems powered by machine learning in all of these environments. And with TensorFlow.js, you can run, retrain via transfer learning, or write your own models completely from a blank canvas. And with this, you can use it for anything you may dream up. Things like sound recognition, gesture-based interaction, sentiment analysis, conversational AI, and much, much more. Now, there's a few ways we can use TensorFlow.js based with the familiarity with machine learning, JavaScript, or both. As we're just at the start of this learning path, we'll be starting by using pre-trained models to help solve a problem. Here, someone's taken the time to create a machine learning model for a very specific task by training it on data they've already collected and then made the model public for others to reuse. In a few lines of code, you can import the model with TensorFlow.js and try it out on your own data to see if it works well. And today, we'll be trying to solve the common problem of comment spam on websites. Now you know what machine learning is, head on to the next video to learn more about how we can use it to solve this specific problem.